Good morning, good afternoon. This is Benjamin Kabe from Eclipse. Welcome to this fourth, I think, third uh, session of our virtual IoT meetups. Uh, today we're going to talk about data visualization, and uh, we have our guest speaker is uh, Christopher Clark from from Actuate, working on the Eclipse Bird project, and he's going to basically explain us why uh, how you can use uh, Eclipse Bird to visualize IoT data. And I think there's also a cool demo in the presentation. So. As always, please use the Q&A. If you watch the, the video from YouTube or from uh, Google Google Plus, uh, you should be able to find the Q&A um, section where you can post a, a question that we will answer at the end. Or you can also use the hashtag virtualIoT on Twitter. I'll be monitoring that. And we'll uh, basically, in about 30 minutes, we will check the questions that you guys have. So without further ado, Chris, it's up to you. Thank you. Uh, so good morning. Uh, my name is Christopher Clark, and I'm an evangelist uh, for the uh, Open Source Bird Project with Actuate. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how you can visualize uh, your IoT data using Bird. Uh, now, I created a project uh, to do this uh, using my uh, car that I drive around town here in Kansas City. Uh, so uh, a car is uh, an IoT device uh, if you're able to retrieve that data from it. So I'm going to go uh, give an overview on uh, the technologies I used uh, to create this and uh, the end result of the, uh, the project at the end of the presentation. I'm also going to give a uh, brief introduction to uh, BERT for those of you that might not be familiar. Uh, I'll be discussing a little bit about how IoT can be used as a uh, data source to make your IoT device, uh, devices smarter. Uh, I'll be giving a uh, brief uh, demo of the uh, BERT designer from within Eclipse. Uh, and I'll uh, talk a little bit uh, more about extending IoT with BERT. And finally, at the end, I'll leave it open uh, to some questions uh, via Twitter or the uh, Google Hangout. So uh, as I had just mentioned, uh, I decided to use my car for this project. Uh, I wanted to use real-world data that uh, actually meant something that uh, I could draw some interesting correlations from. Uh, so how I did this was I took my car, and underneath the dash, uh, there is a port for the onboard diagnostics computer. Uh, and in the U.S., after 1996, uh, it was uh, mandated that all cars have this uh, it, it, this port installed somewhere in the vehicle. And I believe in Europe it was after 2001. So uh, all new cars uh, should have this uh, onboard di diagnostic port for you uh, to be able to use if you wanted to uh, create a project similar to this. Now, uh, the next step is I needed to be able to extract that data. Uh, I went ahead and purchased a, a cheap device called a OBD link scan tool. Uh, the form factor looks similar to what you would expect the old parallel ports to look like on a uh, computer printer. So it plugs uh, directly in underneath the dash while the car's off, and it's uh, Bluetooth enabled, so it can communicate back and forth. So to extract that data, I used an Android application that was free. They also have a, a pro version out there called Tort. Uh, now, I did find that there were some Python libraries that you could uh, use and communicate uh, with the onboard computer with the Raspberry Pi over Bluetooth if uh, you wanted to get a little more granular with it and bring in some more sensors, uh, maybe some uh, cabin pe temperature and things like that. But for sim uh, simplicity, I uh, went ahead and stuck with this uh, Torque application and uh, build all the needs for this project. So now I have the car. And I have the tool that can extract the data, and I have the Android application that's able to actually retrieve the data from that uh, scan tool. Uh, the next step uh, in the process to be able to use IoT data in my report, report is to select a protocol. Uh, for this project, I uh, chose to use MQTT. Now, uh, I was pretty new to the uh, IoT world and the different protocols available, uh, I don't know, about eight months ago. Uh, before I had done another IoT project for uh, EclipseCon. Uh, the way I like to think about it, if you're also new to IoT, is MQTT and the broker is kind of like Twitter for things. So your devices are connected to the internet, uh, push messages upstream to the broker, and any other device that wants that can subscribe to your uh, that topic or uh, 
message. And as it comes in from the broker, it's uh, distributed out uh, wide across to anybody that's uh, subscribed to that. So uh, we have the car, the scan tool, the application, and the protocol, and my uh, broker happens to be HiveMQ. Uh, again, think of uh, the broker in this case kind of like Twitter, so it's uh, handling the messaging back and forth, and MQTT is the protocol. So to retrieve that uh, data from my car uh, live, uh, inside my root report, I selected a uh, JavaScript library from Paho. It's a, a client uh, JavaScript library that allows me to retrieve that data and display it as those data points come through on that MQTT broker. Uh, I also, at the same time that those data points are coming in, I want to persist the data so I can look at historical trends and, and uh, analyze this and try to find some sort of interesting correlation. So I went ahead and used uh, MySQL for the data persistence. Uh, so now that we have the Paho JavaScript library to bring in the data. I can also push data back upstream to the uh, broker uh, to push out uh, alerts to other devices. Uh, but I can also, uh, using uh, F-Type, uh, execute a report, and in this case, it's going out to a browser in HTML. Uh, what I found interesting about this project is that it was really never meant to be a work thing. I just found this real cheap adapter that uh, link scan tool uh, online one day and I started creating reports and uh, next thing you know uh, I started seeing some interesting correlations so I got the opportunity to uh, kind of put all this together and uh, start showing exactly how BERT and other IoT devices can communicate back and forth. So now that you have an idea of the direction of the project or uh, what I wanted to do with it uh, I'm gonna, uh, I want to go over BERT and uh, what it is uh, just briefly. So BERT is a mature product and it's been around uh, since 2004. Uh, there's been several major releases. With each one, it adds uh, its their own unique uh, features and uh, uh, tool sets uh, to uh, each uh, version. Uh, so more, most notably, I like to uh, call out the dynamic cross-tab support so for uh, data aggregation and summarization. Uh, and the one I tend to gravitate towards the most is being able to use a POJO as a data source. So if we don't connect to some data out of the box that you'd like to, or it's some non-traditional data source, such as an IoT data source, as long as you can get to it in Java and pull it back, uh, BERT can uh, use that and display it. The uh, current version of BERT is 441, and you can download that either at eclipse.org slash BERT or uh, developer.actuate.com. So BERT has several key capabilities. Uh, I'm not going to go over each and every one of those, uh, but I do want to call out uh, two points here. Uh, one, we have the ability to uh, connect to several different data sets. I talked a little bit about POJO earlier, uh, but we also obviously connect to more uh, traditional data sources such as uh, SQL. We also connect to flat files, XML, as well as uh, several others. Uh, and the other point I'd like to make on, uh, on this uh, slide is that uh, we leverage uh, common standards that you're probably already familiar with in web development, such as HTML and uh, JavaScript. So if you're already familiar with uh, the process of web development, the uh, getting started curve is pretty shallow, and uh, there's already resources out there uh, for you and the Berk community to uh, uh, go ahead and get started uh, with the reporting. So uh, Berk... Uh, is essentially split into two main components. We have the BERT designer and the BERT engine. Both of these are uh, made up uh, from APIs that you can use in your own custom application if you choose to do so. But for the scope of uh, this talk, I'm going to be uh, discussing uh, the BERT designer. The BERT designer is a, uh, an Eclipse perspective. It's a very easy to use uh, visual, what you see is what you get, drag and drop environment. Uh, that way, you don't have to go and worry about uh, custom coding as well as uh, you know several lines of uh, JavaScript to create your charts, uh, things of that nature. So uh, BERT actually sits inside of Eclipse as that perspective, and that's where you create your data sources and, uh, is, and tell BERT how you want your report to look like. Uh, when you uh, save that uh, report design, it actually saves out to an XML-based design file. Now this design file is lightweight and it's designed to be because all it's doing is describing what your report is supposed to look like when it's rendered. It's not going to contain any data, but
but it will contain the connection details for the data sources and data sets that you've provided, such as username and password to a SQL uh, database, as well as the query that you'd like to execute. Now, that's the first half uh, of BERT. Now, the second main half of BERT is the engine itself. The engine is responsible for looking at that uh, design file, uh, interpreting uh, how you want that uh, report to re render uh, in the end. Uh, it also uh, takes those connection details and the queries that you want to run, uh, goes out and connects to your uh, data sources, brings that data in, and we're able to uh, render the report so you can render it out in two main ways. You can either render it out to a document, uh, which uh, goes and grabs the data and it uh, stores it inside the document and it's ready to render at a later uh, date so you don't have to hit that uh, database again. Or uh, you can go directly out to some format that uh, you're needing. And in this case, I'm using HTML since it's a web application. So with that uh, design file that we were discussing, uh, it, it is portable, so you have multiple de deployment options. You can use that uh, BERT engine and APIs uh, to render the report with that same file, but you can also uh, deploy that in two other options. We have an on-demand uh, on uh, version called BERT On Demand, and we also have a uh, commercial server called BERT iHub. So, now that you know the scope of the project that I'm, and uh, the goal I'm trying to achieve, and you know a little bit about BERT and how it visualizes data and connects to it, uh, how exactly does BERT play into the IoT world? Where, where is its uh, piece? Because it's not traditionally a thing, as you would think, as a temperature sensor or a uh, humidity sensor. Uh, well, here we have an infographic uh, that shows the current state of uh, the IoT world. So on the left, you have several different uh, devices that uh, may or may not be able to communicate with each other, but uh, the point of IoT is to be able to leverage uh, common IoT communication protocols to allow those devices uh, to interact and communicate and pass data back and forth to one another. Uh, in, in this project, I, uh, again, went with MQTT. Now, it's not just that uh, these devices can share data with each other. Uh, the real goal, in my opinion, with IoT is to be able to act on that data. So you have sensor A that sends information to sensor B, and it can make a, a decision based on everything else that it's getting at that time. So then you use the protocol, and you have it in what we know now as the Internet of Things. Well, there's no reason BERT can't be thought of as another thing, even though it is uh, software. Uh, the reason is we're able to leverage those same open IoT communication protocols through the Internet of Things application and go directly to the device uh, through that uh, MQTT broker. So we can bring that data in. We can visualize that as they're being published uh, to that broker. And we can also, uh, if you're persisting the data, you can show uh, historical trends. So we can actually help make your devices make decisions smarter. So you may have uh, custom logic uh, uh, that's uh, encoded into sensor A and sensor B and sensor C, uh, but what are the long-term ramifications of that? Where are the points you really need to drill down and say, uh, this isn't right? Well, BERT is, it gives you the capability to visualize that over time and see what you need to look at and make the sensors communicate in a more efficient, smarter way. So we talked about how you can uh, use a POJO to bring in uh, a data source and uh, a script. We also have the ability to use a uh, scripted data source. <clears throat> so if you're familiar with JavaScript and you can get to <clears throat> the uh, data in Java, all you have to do is write some scripting inside of your BERT report and uh, bring it back and tell when it's uh, done retrieving data. Uh, the advantage to this is you don't have to roll your own jars and distribute them among your peers. So it is a, a powerful way to uh, communicate and uh, connect to data. And there's also uh, an, an ODA, which is a, a very graphical UI approach to connecting and reusing data sources. But we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So this is the uh, BERT designer. It, and again, it's a, an Eclipse perspective. It, what you see here 
is uh, very visual and uh, you can drag items over. So let me go ahead and move over to uh, the designer and I'll show you how to create a real simple report. So as I described earlier, uh, first you need to create a data source. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use a sample uh, database, but if you're going to create, uh, say, SQL data source, this is where you put in your username and password. Now, this doesn't need to be hard-coded. Uh, everything you see, uh, just about everything you can see, can be parameterized so you can make them dynamic. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create a uh, data source on our sample database. And the data set is just pointing at the data source to know what the connection details are. So you can create multiple data sets off of the same data source. You also have the ability to use several different data sources within the same design easily. So you can bring in Mongo as well as uh, SQL and, in my case uh, today, uh, IoT data. So we'll go ahead and create a uh, real simple select star query. As you see, it gives uh, the column names. We can create computed columns if we don't want to uh, do that from the query. We can also have uh, parameters, so we can parameterize that. We can uh, either filter inside my uh, query or uh, uh, here in the UI. And we can uh, preview the results. So now we have a, a data set, we have a data source, what happens next? Uh, this is really where uh, BERT tends to shine. Uh, like I had said earlier, uh, you don't have to do custom reporting, custom code. You can uh, let uh, BERT really uh, handle the heavy stuff here for you. So to create a real simple listing report, we can come over here, select what we want, uh, apply a little bit of formatting to this uh, table. We'll save it and uh, take a look at what that might look like. So that's a very simple uh, listing report, and it's not very useful. So we can add a few more uh, details in here that uh, might make it look a little bit better, as well as uh, add some charting. So we can come over to the header, uh, select a uh, background color. We can also group our data with the grouping tab. So we'll go ahead and group on a customer number and create a page break after. And above it, we'll drag on a chart. So you see we have several different uh, chart types that are supported out of the box. So for this, we'll go ahead and use a line chart. You see, you can select uh, any of the data sources you've created. We only have the one. It uh, gives you the available columns. We'll uh, bring amount over and bring over payment date. Now we can select grouping from here as well. Uh, so we have uh, years, uh, quarters, months, etc. Uh, and we can create the aggregation. So I'll leave it on years and the sum. We'll edit uh, the chart, which you have the formatting tab. And now we can take a look at what it looks like. So you see we have the grouping with the page breaks, we have a, uh, a bird chart, and that took me all of maybe two minutes. Uh, so it, it, the time to deployment using BERT, uh, it's really, really powerful. So let's go ahead and come back over to my uh, slideshow. So the uh, flow of creating a data source uh, that I showed you with the sample database, uh, that's an ODA. And I, I spoke a little bit about an ODA earlier. Uh, so with my first interaction with IoT some months back with the uh, Eurotech uh, people counter at uh, EclipseCon, uh, I created a POJO to do this. Now, this is an ODA I've been working on to uh, simplify the process. So if you're going to create a data source over and over again, uh, you can, uh, since you're into writing code anyway, you can use some of BERT's extension points to create a UI and have a, a graphical way to uh, connect to that data so you don't have to keep rewriting code. 
Uh, it's the same flow. Uh, it, the actual uh, Eurotech data source if I select the name uh, there is just a test name I'm using. We'll enter our connection details, create the data set pointing at our data source, and we can enter in our, uh, our, our path there at the bottom, which uh, returns back the data points I can select. And I can create a second data source based, or excuse me, data set based off of that data source. Uh, now, it's important to note that this is Eurotech specific uh, with their implementation. Uh, another uh, ODA that I've been working on that is going to be available for download uh, once I, I get that uh, working is going to be a more generic MQTT ODA. So if you have MQTT data and you don't want to write a custom ODA or a POJO or a scripted data set, you'll be able to use this and uh, connect to that MQTT broker. So you've seen how we design uh, a BERT report, uh, seen it run inside of the uh, sample viewer that's provided uh, inside of Eclipse, or excuse me, inside of a, uh, a BERT, and you know what the idea of the, uh, the dashboard is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the dashboard live. So here is a uh, BERT report. Uh, this is a, a, everything you see here I uh, designed inside that uh, Eclipse perspective. Uh, so I have a few different uh, charts here showing uh, data. Now this is not live data, but this is real data that I collected as I drove around town in my car. So what I did to emulate this being live is I created a very simple class that loops through the SQL database uh, that I have that data stored in and I have a timer. So every, I, I believe it's one second, I publish uh, new data points to the MQTT broker. So it's simulated live, but it is actual real data. Uh, now these charts, I believe I have set to up, update every three seconds. Uh, so on the left here, we have the speed uh, in kilometers per hour, as well as the converted miles per hour uh, below it. We have a, uh, a real time, or near real time tachometer off to the uh, right here. Now I added a gauge pod uh, here in the middle. Uh, onto the right we have uh, the water temperature uh, and on the left we have the fuel rate, not the uh, fuel amount in the tank uh, but the fuel flow rate to the engine. Now immediately uh, before I even show any BERT reports I found an unintended correlation uh, with my live data which, tip, uh, which is typically you'll see the fuel rate fluctuate uh, before the RPMs or my engine speed changes. Uh, now that might not be surprising to some, but I'm not uh, a mechanic, uh, but I found it uh, interesting because you can immediately start to see a correlation of uh, engine lag between the fuel, uh, or excuse me, the accelerometer press versus the responsiveness of the uh, engine. Now below we have a uh, the code lights uh, for oil, engine, high beams, and uh, water temperature. Now, with that uh, connector that I plugged into my OBD2 port, uh, I'm able to read engine codes as well. So if your engine throws a check, uh, a check engine light, we're able to highlight it here. Uh, or a uh, check your oil light, we can also uh, uh, display that here. Uh, unfortunately, I was not willing to uh, throw any engine codes for the uh, demo, so you have to take my word for it that uh, that, <laughs> that does work. Now, uh, off to the left, I have a uh, button that links out to uh, my iHub F-Type uh, uh, server administration page. And uh, where we really start to bring BERT into this dashboard is this View More Stats button. Uh, using the same process that you saw earlier where I was creating the, the charts where I dragged it onto uh, the design area, I was able to create these four charts. Uh, now, these uh, they're really simple analysis, but you can still draw very powerful conclusions from pretty much all four of these. So on the upper left, we have the gas mileage analysis. So we can uh, see, obviously, my uh, uh, kilometers per liter goes down uh, as my RPMs go up. So interestingly enough, my best uh, gas mileage uh, would be here. Now this is higher but uh, we're, we're talking zero to three miles an hour so actual use case my best gas mileage is going to be 
uh, here it's uh, 29.635 and uh, that is between 60 and 80 kilometers per hour. Uh, another interesting correlation that we see over here is the uh, engine resource needs with the uh, engine speed. So as you'd expect to see, as your engine speed increases, the uh, fuel rate uh, goes up. Uh, you also see the torque needs uh, steadily go up and start to taper off and go back up. Now I had mentioned earlier that BERT, uh, using IoT as a data source with BERT, it allows your devices to make uh, smarter decisions. So you see the uh, fuel rate go up and then suddenly drop off. Now uh, that might be an anomaly in the data. I don't have enough data points uh, more towards the end. Or it might actually be uh, something I need to look into. So if my devices are acting on this data and I see this anomaly there, I can go back into my code and uh, reanalyze exactly how I want my devices to act when those data points are hit. We also see my emissions output, CO2 and uh, grams per kilometer. Uh, and we see some of the hybrid uh, system sets, which uh, I'm not, again, I'm not a mechanic, so I, I can't make the most sense out of it, but I thought it was fun just to show that since it, it's a, a hybrid car. So uh, that is uh, how you take uh, devices and bring them in to show uh, data in real time using uh, PAHO's MQTT library, or excuse me, PAHO's JavaScript client library, uh, and an MQTT broker, in this case, HiveMQ. Now, what you don't see is in the background, I actually have uh, another class that is subscribed to my topic uh, for speed. And I have a uh, properties file that set, sets a maximum speed. So if that uh, threshold is met or exceeded, I'm able to use uh, some more BERT APIs to execute automatically uh, within my uh, server uh, a report in a PDF format, uh, notify somebody or push a notification to the MQTT broker, as well as automatically email that report to uh, somebody who I think should be seeing this information. So. Uh, that that uh, my project, uh, the overall idea of the project, which is uh, I wanted to get to take uh, realistic uh, IoT data and show realistic correlations, as well as bring in some of the uh, Eclipse IoT stack uh, technologies that are uh, currently out there. Uh, so where do you get started from here? Uh, where do you go if you're new to BERT or if you want more information about BERT? We have a, a, an entire website dedicated to that called the BERT Developer Center. Uh, we have demos, uh, tutorials, uh, documentation out there. There's also a very active forum community that uh, I'm also a part of. I like to go out there and help uh, other BERT users uh, figure out of where to get started and how to design those uh, BERT reports. Also, the uh, code for the uh, dashboard project that I just showed you is going to be posted later this week on the uh, Dev Center, which is, or excuse me, DevShare, which is a place to uh, share your code and tips and tricks with other BERT developers. Now, another site you, I uh, strongly suggest you uh, take a look at, especially if you're new to IoT, is uh, iot.eclipse.org. Uh, that is the group that is putting together uh, a lot of these uh, IoT uh, technologies and protocols and tools, and uh, BERT is uh, a part of that, uh, rightfully so, to be able to take that data and show uh, exactly what you can and can't do with it, and again, draw some correlations. So with um, that said, I'll go ahead and uh, leave it open for some uh, questions, uh, either from the Google Hangout or from the uh, Twitter hashtag. Thank you, Chris. Um, well, actually, I will start with a question. Um, well, you've talked about how when you did um, your um, your experiments with your with your priors, you discovered some some patterns in in the gas consumption and and, and so on, but. I guess you kind of discover them manually, right? So, what are uh, are there any options for for Bert developers to to combine Bert with some uh, machine machine learning techniques, machine learning technologies for actually discovering those patterns uh, kind of automatically? So, um, to do that automatically, you. Uh, 
I, I may have to get back to this uh, user one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I, I don't have the answer uh, right offhand, but uh, I can uh, go through some of my resources. So Benjamin, if you can uh, provide me with the uh, Twitter handle of the person that asked that, I can uh, look into that for them. Okay. Um, okay, another question we have, and um, I'm sure you will need uh, to, to clarify. I thought it was clear during the presentation, but uh, John is asking us uh, if the open source version of BERT does dashboards. So the open source version of BERT does not do dashboards as you think of them traditionally. So I built this in a dashboard style layout. Uh, so that's how I was able to uh, achieve this uh, a view uh, that you saw as a, as a dashboard. Uh, but if you do want to uh, try out uh, dashboarding, you can get a free trial of our uh, Pro Designer uh, that's available for download on the uh, products page. Okay. Um, maybe along the same lines, uh, you mentioned the fact that uh, BERT can automatically send uh, emails, for example, when some alerts are, are triggered. Is that part of the BERT open source project or is that in, in, in the commercial offer? So uh, to do that, I was actually using the uh, commercial APIs. Uh, we do have some other things in, uh, in the works right now that uh, I don't know if I... Uh, it can share, but uh, I did use the commercial APIs to uh, yeah, to interact with uh, iHub F-Type. But the neat thing is F-Type is a free commercial grade server, so if they want to take a look at that and play around with it, uh, that is available for them to uh, try. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions on Twitter or on the Q&A, so I think uh, we will um, we will wrap the, the presentation uh, now. So uh, we will be posting the slides. Uh, of course, the the video is recorded. It's going to be available on YouTube right after the end of uh, of this presentation. And thanks again, Chris. It was it was really great. So uh, as you said, uh, well, people should just look uh, for uh, hopefully for the ODA, the MQTT ODA, as well as your all your code samples to be to be available in, in the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah, and I'll uh, be posting a blog uh, sometime this week as well to go along with it. Uh, so uh, be looking for a tweet from me. I'll uh, I'll mention uh, uh, Clip, the Eclipse Foundation and that as well, so people can find it easily. Okay, great. Uh, well, thanks uh, everybody for for joining. Uh, we'll uh, talk again next week for I think a webinar about OM2M. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we have we have a last question. Let's take that one. How does a BERT data source synchronize and adapt to the amount and specific data available from the IoT device in real time? Can you provide on more detail on the interface from from IoT? Yeah, I guess the question is around the fact that. Uh, sometimes sensors just, uh, I mean, depending uh, over the life of your, of your project, the sensors are of, on the field will start reporting uh, different uh, types of data. So how can you uh, deal with that from, from BERT? So uh, how I dealt with the IoT data in my report is uh, I, for the live data, I use that uh, PAHO library. And like I had mentioned earlier, I bring in the data uh, and store it in SQL for persistence. Now, if the device starts reporting uh, different kinds of data or uh, data that you don't want or don't expect, uh, and you're pulling that out of the SQL database uh, for persistence, or at least in my case, uh, if that's how I'm going at it, you can uh, go in to the uh, scripting editor uh, within the uh, data source, or or excuse me, data set uh, UI, and uh, create some custom logic. Uh, I don't have a hard and fast rule for you on that, but if you uh, know that parameters uh, uh, plus or minus, uh, if they go above or below those, if you don't want to include those in your report, you can do a simple uh, script expression in there. If data is above or below some value, then we're not going to use it. Okay. Okay. So, um... Yeah, I, I guess uh, ne next week uh, I'll remind everybody to, to start asking questions as we do the presentation, so as we don't have questions arriving uh, late. 
so thanks again. Uh, please feel free to, to watch the, the, the recording and uh, if you have any questions after the presentation, feel free to just drop a comment on YouTube or on the Meetup page and we will forward your, your questions to, to Chris. Thanks. Bye-bye. Have a good day.